Hi everyone, it's Lou Collins. Thank you for joining me for another Distress Ink and Oxide colour combination video. And today we're going to be focusing on Stormy Sky. We are really rattling through all of the colours uh, throughout the range. We are up to obviously the end of the S's now, towards the end of the S's. Um, we only have around about 10 more videos left to do, something like that, before we've completed the entire range, all the alphabet. So uh, Stormy Sky is a grey blue, um, it's a beautiful colour, now if you've not seen any of these videos before we are going to look at the colour swatched onto white cardstock, we're going to compare it to others in the range as well and then I'm going to give you two different colour combinations also that you can go away and try at home. So the first thing is swatching. Now as always everything that I'm using is all linked down in the description below. So that includes the brushes, that includes the labels and the colour chart that I have hosted on my own blog free for you to download and that also includes things like my blending mat too. So I'm going to pop this into the middle of this section here, this swatch here, because I'm going to put colours on either end when we do our first colour combination. As you can see, it is a really soft blue. It is what I call a grey blue. Isn't that just beautiful? I really, really like that actually. And let's bring it in because I do find it's a little more grey than the label shows. So it's not quite as blue, but it's not far off. It's really not too far away. Maybe a little more blue and a little bit darker as well. So I often compare to the label because this is what you're seeing when you're purchasing your items from the shop or from or online. You're going to see the label first rather than the actual ink swatched anywhere. So let's take a look at others in the range. Now when we look at the colour chart, this is one that I've filled in at home. I've printed it off from my website and uh, you can do the same, like I say, completely for free, but you do need to fill it in then. There is also a template sheet available to get these perfect rectangles to fit onto if you want to use that. This is kind of where the blue green, oh sorry, blue greys are sitting, or most of the blues really. So you can see here we've got stormy sky. Um, weathered wood is a little more on the green side, so it's not too different. Um, it's a similar shade, but definitely a bit warmer, a little bit more green. Uh, underneath faded jeans is a darker blue, definitely more of a rich blue there, and then going into the much darker blues. And tumble glass is way off. It's a bright, light baby blue, um, much, much brighter, much more um, kind of yellow in there as well. Um, looking at any other blues around, so we've got Blueprint Sketch, which is uh, falls onto sort of the purples page in the end. These aren't one particular colour per strip, it just happens to work almost that way. And then if I come to the previous one, which is after the greens, it's kind of all the turquoises here. Um, speckled egg is probably the only other blue potentially but no way off again so like I say really we haven't got anything really close but I would say if you wanted to try these colour combinations maybe have a go with weathered wood but that is a little more green okay so let's do these colour combinations now the first one I'm going to give you today is going using this as the base colour and going lighter and darker so it's what I call tonal and I'm going to be using weathered wood and chipped sapphire either side so chipped sapphire is a much darker blue I'm going to bring this just this end let's just grab a piece of vellum to protect my fingers so I'm going to blend this into the base here. As you can see, chipped sapphire is kind of almost a royal blue, just a touch darker. I'd say this is closest to navy, actually. Sorry, not royal blue, navy blue. So I'm going to fill in the white part of my strip here, the, the empty part, all the way up to where I kind of finished with the stormy sky. Let's take a little more stormy sky just on my brush there. Go back into the centre and I'm going to start going in small circles round. Now so many of you message me and say that your blending, your ink blending has improved since uh, I've been doing these videos and I am so grateful for every message. I'd love to be able to respond to everybody. I try to respond where I can um, but it, just know that I'm really really grateful that you let me know that it's helping you and that it is helping you. No, I'm really pleased. That's what it's all about is uh, allowing you to make the most out of your supplies. I think the Tim Holtz Distress range is something of 
um, almost a fashion item that we all have felt in the past that we need to collect because everybody does, every crafter has them. Um, but I want to make sure that if you've fallen into that, I wouldn't say trap, it's not a trap, but if you've fallen into really wanting every colour, that you know what you're going to do with them and you know how best to use them, make the most of them because, you know, there's a lot of money's worth there, no doubt, if you have started collecting them. And then I'm going to go into weathered wood. So I'm going to put weathered wood at the top here. So I'm just near, my ink pad was stored upside down. So, and I've just turned it round recently. So I need to just allow that ink to come back up to the surface here. There we go. That's building it up now. Also, I washed my brush. So just building it up on the white area first. Make sure I've got that solid colour down. So you can see weathered wood, like I say, has that greener tone. It's more grey, more green, less of a blue. We'll just blend this up to that line where the stormy sky is. It's quite a quite a moody colour, this one. And then I'm going to take the brush that still has stormy sky on and I'm going to go back. I'm not going to put any more on. I think I've got enough there. And I'm just very, very light pressure, small circles, just going around and lifting that up into the weathered wood. Perfect. So we've then got a lovely transition from the deep dark blue into the lighter blue and up into almost into a grey there. I think that's just lovely for three colours if you want a nice subtle ombre for say a background for a card. But let's do another combination. Now this one is a little, I would say a little bit brighter. We're kind of bringing in some warmer tones in this one. So let's wipe my mat clean. We're going to start with Lost Shadow. So Lost Shadow is a grey. But Lost Shadow is a bit of a warm grey. Very, very pale, as you can see, barely there. But I think this is going to work so beautifully into Stormy Sky. Yeah, there we go. Just a bit of that on there. Into the Lost Shadow. So the Lost Shadow almost gives us this sort of faded ombre into almost nothing, which I love. There we go. Up. We can just bring the colour of the stormy sky up so we get this pale, pale blue and then and then into the grey. I just love that on its own. Just that on its own is gorgeous. It kind of reminds me of a winter uh, sort of like snowy scene, something like that. Then I'm going to wipe my mat, take away these darker, cooler shades because then we're going to be going into Tattered Rose. So let's pick up some tattered rose on my brush. I know that my tattered rose ink pad is starting to get dry. I know that I need to um, re-ink it, but I'm struggling to find tattered rose uh, ink anywhere at the moment. It seems to have sold out everywhere, so I'm just waiting somewhere, somewhere to get that back in stock. Right, so then I'm going to go into here so again like I say this one need, I need to load up lots and lots of ink and build up the colour it is a very pale colour but it's so worth it and see how pale that is so I'm going to work at that I'm going to build up layers and layers until it's as solid as I'd like it what I'm going to do is take my stormy sky and I'm very likely going to do little circles just along the edge there where the tattered rose is. And then again with this on, I'm going to blend it in with the tattered rose brush, just like so. Very gently, again, tiny, tiny circles there. Beautiful. So that's just gone in. Now I might come back. To the tattered rose in a moment just because I want to add salt water taffy this is kind of a bright pop of bright color at the end now salt water taffy and tattered rose work lovely into each other I'm sure I've done them in previous combinations but this is I don't want to lose the tattered rose I want to make sure that I've got 
both colours really showing nicely. So applying a bit more of that and working up into saltwater taffy there. I might just reinstate this once more, just over the middle. There we go. Gorgeous. So a little bit different there, but really, really pretty. Now those lines that you can see are where it's damper. So the um, blue here, the, the stormy sky, which is the colour we're looking at, this was a little bit, um, it was, it's a newer ink pad, so it was juicier. Um, so there's a lot more of the dye content in there and that's the dye that sort of soaked into the paper, made it a little more damp so that will look darker, but that will all fade to this beautiful sort of creamy frosted look when it's just the pigments kind of sitting on top and the dye has all soaked in and dried. So there's two new colour combinations for you to try out at home using Stormy Sky. And if you like this video, please do make sure you check out the playlist where I've covered nearly all of the other colours in the Distress Ink and Oxide range just here. And I would love it if you could subscribe to my channel just here as well. And I hope to see you again very soon for the next colour.